Well, speaking of the real deal. Yeah. There's not too many deals that are realer <laughs> than Doug Baldwin. Dougie the, Fresh. The undrafted man out of Stanford will not be denied. Old, You just can't put this guy in a box. You can't put old Doug in a box. Can't put him in the corner either. Nope. Can't put Doug in the corner. Can't put Doug in a box. Just put him on the field and let him do work. That's right. There's really just... Not too much bad things you can say about Doug. He's a, he seems like a all around good dude. He's a great interview. He's a leader, um, and and more so than anything, like he's just a a hard working dude. Right. He's ready to roll. Um, yeah. Yeah. We were talking off air about how he's jeopardized off field relationships because of how dedicated he is yeah. to the game. And I saw that putting in work. I saw that in like an interview. Taught him. He was talking about how you know he he loves this game so much that you know. He's jeopardized some off the field relationships because of, you know, how much time and effort and work that he and sacrifice that he puts into this game. Yeah, we can relate. You know, we're in here slaving away. Our wives are getting upset. because We're not hanging out with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we don't have any big co here today, obviously. Right. Um, but he sh I know he shares kind of the same sentiments as uh, me and me and old Jay Wayne over here with with or about Doug Baldwin. Um, this was again, we he did give us our ranking, his rankings, and it's an average here. Um, and, and at, 16 at sixteen on the list to lead off the to lead the night. it off exactly. He's it's Doug Baldwin. So Big Coast's uh, whole ideology behind Doug Baldwin is that he he believes that you know from everything that we just stated about the work ethic and all that other stuff and and how much he loves the game is that he thinks that he could be catching balls and crushing much like Larry Fitzgerald way into the you know mid mid thirties twilight of your career quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Um. So I know that's a big reason why why Big Co's all in on on some Doug Baldwin, which I, I think I think both of us share the same kind of feelings. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a the the guy that's next in our average rankings uh, is is hard not. It's hard when you watch his tape to not put him up there, right? And then above the Dougie, but then when you watch Doug's tape, it's like, well, I gotta go right back to Dougie, right? Even, regardless of the age, uh, really. I mean, he's 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 a young twenty nine. If I had to. <laughs> If I had to pin that, yeah. Um, looking at him, in the last three years he's finished as the wide receiver ten in fit 2015, the wide receiver eight in 16, and the wide receiver 13 this last year. Yeah, and then like eight yards away this season from three consecutive thousand yard seasons, which you like right. to see. Seventy five catches, but he did have eight eight touchdowns. Right. I mean the the 2015. Kind of ten TDs in four games with fourteen total, which ten TDs in four games is is the record. I, I, he passed. Uh, yeah. I forget which Packer and Brett Favre, but mm -hmm. Russell Wilson to to Baldwin and and that stretch of games was I believe the most of anybody ever. Yeah. So that I mean that's a probably ridiculous. a pipe dream of fourteen. But I mean I I don't see any problem with you know seven to nine ten area for at least another year or two. Yeah, I mean he's got twenty nine over the last three years. That obviously that fourteen kind of helps him, but right. that's a solid average. And and to have to follow that up with eight is as strong as it gets. Right. Really. Absolutely. I mean, there's he's just really a complete receiver. There's really not much you could take. He smokes you in man coverage. Um, if you throw it his way, man to man. No chance. Yeah. Um, and then he's got the awareness to win in the zone. Yeah. You know, he knows where to be. He knows how to beat the zone. He knows, you know, how to slide with this guy. And, and you know, Russ is his guy. Yeah, he might be the only guy that likes Russell Wilson <laughs> in that locker room. They, they just, they're just, they know how to play together. They're on the same, he knows how to finish his route. And then he knows how to be kind of where they have a playground kind of yeah. sense about them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get in. I want to get into that a little bit more later. Like, but you'd mentioned, you know, the route running and beating man coverage. Like he's got Allen Iverson type quickness. Like his yeah. metrics don't jump off the page. Somehow, somehow the metrics say he's not good at football. <laughs> Fancy that. Yeah, at least some of them anyway. Um, but I mean, he's he, I've literally seen defensive backs fall down from some of the moves he's put yeah. on dudes like in the end zone. Right. It's crazy. And it's not like, you know, the speed that is is measured in like when he ran a 40 or whatever is not the same speed that shows up on the field. Right. Like it's just he he has what he's got game. The game speed is different than if you're racing somebody or racing himself in a timed event. It's just right. He just has that extra no gear because he, he he I believe it's a it's an inner it's an inner thing that he just he wants it more than you do. I know we said that a little bit about Jarvis Landry last week, and I'm going to bring it back on Doug Baldwin. Like, this guy just plays with, like, a boulder on his shoulder. Feeling kind of <laughs> older. I tripped in the merry-go-round. Nice. Yeah? Solid. Yeah. Yeah? All right. I like it. All right.
Got a little. Uh, what was who? Who was that? I don't know. Um, that John Denver's full of <laughs> shit. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he's only missed two games in the last seven years. Durable, and none in the last five years. Yeah. So if he if he was a condom, that would be like <laughs> the best condom ever. That's definitely <laughs> the one you should pick for her pleasure. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. The dude plays all over the field. Obviously, he crushes it from the slot, but he can go vertical. He he has awesome hands. He has the third lowest drop rate this past year. Only one drop out of seventy six PFF deemed catchable balls. Right. Preface with that. Um, he can make the one handed grab, the diving play. He's he's gritty. He's tough. He's not afraid to go over the middle. He's great after the catch. He's yeah. had a thousand yak yards over the past three years combined. Gotta love that. But it's not just that he's great after the catch. He's great before the catch. After the play breaks down and Russell starts scrambling, the ad libbing yeah. is impeccable. Right. Like he and Wilson are on the same page, and they're 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 not only on the same page. They're on the same line of the same paragraph together. Like right. them boys just when that play breaks down and Russell starts scrambling. He just knows where Doug's going to be, yeah, and, Doug and Doug knows breaks where off go. his route yeah. and goes where he has to go to get open, and that's when the ridiculous plays are made, and right. it's fun to watch, and it makes your day, and it just sometimes it's just icing on the cake of a good day already. Yeah, and which you know th- this kind of stuff can be a little you know especially with a quarterback like Russell Wilson, it can be a little hindrance for an offensive coordinator and maybe some other receivers who aren't quite on that that same level. But them them boys are have a. Right. Uh, Telekinesis is that, mm-hmm. is that with it? Yeah, <laughs> telekinesis, Kyle. That's telekinesis. <laughs> another that right? tenacious D reference. So nice. Um, I don't. Another another cool thing about him is that I don't think that you know him and Russell are going anywhere in Seattle. They're both locked up long term contract wise. Now I know you had a note here that says you know they could possibly get out of. They do have an out this year, I believe, February 9th, His contract they guarantee like half of 4.5 million or something like that there is a way to get out there's like nine million in dead dead cap that's money. a lot of don't, dead i don't money, know though. why they would unless, yeah i can't imagine they didn't believe in him playing into his twilight because they are it is the last year of his deal is pretty expensive well um, they owe him 8.25 for this next year and then it goes up to 9.25 and then 10.25 yeah but i mean that's so you're gonna be playing paying like not, a 32 year old doug baldwin with close to 11 million uh, I don't think they'll cut him. Maybe eventually they'll restructure in some sort. But he he's just he's their one constant in that offense. You know, especially right. with a guy like Russell Wilson. Yeah, he's he's Russell's boy. I can't see Russell letting him go anywhere. I don't that's not a ton of money to pay a top end receiver, even if he is playing mostly out of the slot. But I mean, he's still the guy out there in, in one and two wide receiver sets. And yeah. he can beat you vertically. Oh yeah, he wins he, all over the place. He's, he's just got a, a a bevy of of moves here. He, his route, like you said, the route running is like a crispy white tea, just fresh <laughs> out the packet. And I mean, if if you've ever got a crispy white tea and put it on to start your day, yeah. Oh, you feel like a million bucks leaving the house. I kind of like to wash him. You kind of like to wash him. Well, you, then you lose the crease. Yeah, gotta have the crease. Yeah. yeah or how about a fresh pair of Air Force Ones? Okay. All right, fresh pair of Air Force forces. Fresh Any shoes for that matter. Jordans. Yeah. A6 New Balances if you're Uggs, wider. Uggs that you're wearing around the house. Uggs. Me and Jason both have <laughs> Uggs on. Uggs, if you're listening, we'll take a couple miles yeah. if you want to sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Tommy doesn't need to be the only one. I know he's pretty handsome, but right. come on. Let's let me, go. Let me get some of that Uggs money, dog. Yeah. Uh, off seasons off seasons upon us, and downloads are already starting to pick back up. It's <laughs> dynasty season. We need to get these sponsors in. So off all those other moves that he has, you know, he can he can hit you with pretty much anything you kind of want there. He can hit you with a with a little flat route. Um, he can hit you with the bubble screen, the in or the stick, uh, the fade, the curl, skinny post, pick your poison, mm. um, and he'll just hit you with that flawless victory. Yeah. Like he's not even touched. He doesn't get jammed a whole lot. He's hard. He's hard to wrangle up. Um, and then where all that comes into play is like, especially with that vertical stuff is like that double move that he has is so filthy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you, I just don't really know what else to say. The routes are just so sexy to watch. He just knows how to use all his different gears and all the right spots to get separation. Defenders are guessing what route or the route combo that he's running. And, and kind of with that is just like just the way he runs his routes like he uses different speeds on different routes to just not tip the hand of kind of what or trick the defender into 
you know, where he's going to end up and the route that he's trying to set him up for. It's just really impressive to watch. Um, and especially coming out of that slot where you're, you have the whole field to work with. I mean, right. good luck, man. And a lot of times it's an option route from there. Right. And him and Russell on that same page, it's just, it's he's, tough. He's in the top 15 every every year in wide receiver PPR points. And why wouldn't – that's as safe as you can get here at 16 overall when you're on the clock. Right. There are some younger, shinier options that you could you could possibly go with. Sure. But, you know, when you really look into what Doug Baldwin is bringing to the table, what he has brought to the table, what his skill set is, the rapport he has on the field, his work ethic, everything just says, like, to draft this guy, right? Right. And, I mean, when you're playing Dynasty, I know you can get caught up in trying to win, you know, two or three years from now. I'm not – I, I want to win every year. I want to compete every year. Yeah. I want to I want to have a team that, that is is built to win now and can – I like to have a mixture of youth and, yeah. and veterans. And so you kind of – as a draft unfolds, a startup unfolds, you can take – you know, it's going to – it's gonna every draft unfolds differently. Right. And you're going to have your spots where you could – you can take a, a shinier new object or you can take a solid veteran. And like, I think he falls in that, in that range of that, that I don't know exactly what round you'd be, I guess around the third round. Yeah. Second, third round probably is where you're going to have to take Doug. Baldwin. So are you on, so we were kind of talking about, about win now versus building for the future and, and taking well, Doug Baldwin in a draft. I think, I think with Doug Baldwin, like, you can you can draft kind of how you were saying you kind of get a little mix and then if if you end up seeing that maybe your team isn't you know stacking up to win maybe maybe you you missed on a, a couple of the veterans that you thought were safe or you know what injury every there's all uh, tons mm-hmm. of things that could happen that yeah. just make your season not go the way you want it you'll easily be able to sell Doug Baldwin to a competitor for you know guy who's running for the championship much like you do kind of Larry Fitzgerald every single season. If right. you, you know, if your season's going south and you got Larry, ship him off to somebody for, you know, for something. Obviously, you're going to get more for Doug Baldwin at this point. He's a little younger. Five and, years and, younger. Right, and 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 pretty dynamic, you know, at this point in time. So, Yeah, you that, own Doug Baldwin in a couple of dynasty yeah. leagues we play in, right? Right, and I mean, I, I'm not looking to move him by any means. I do have pretty good teams in, in the two leagues that I do own him in, and I would think if I was gearing up towards a rebuild that, you know, I, I maybe I would I would I'm not going to sell him for cheap. I'm not going to give this guy away for peanuts. I think I could get a haul for Doug mm-hmm. Baldwin. Somebody likes Doug like Big Co for instance. If I wanted to sell Doug Baldwin, I could hit up Big Co and he would give me a a, a pretty solid get back for yeah for Doug Baldwin. So I, I think it's a win win situation. I don't think you can really lose with drafting Doug Baldwin. So. Right. Yeah, I think he can play for for three four five more years right and give you solid dependable production right he's not relying on size or or any of that kind of stuff he's he's relying on himself right like, to and be, he's not one of these bigger dudes that's putting his body on the line play after play getting that that wear and tear that, that on a big frame and right all that other stuff right i know you don't like that <laughs> i mean i like it right but, but it's as, something as they get older you right know, it's definitely something to it's take a lot note easier of. to be five nine than right you know than calvin six, johnson yeah, you know Calvin Johnson four. opened some eyes to to what could happen to these older dudes that are yeah. Taking I, th- I mean, this wear I think tear. Calvin Johnson was taking the wear and tear and was in a poor situation. So, I know, yeah. I know, but it, right. I mean, no, nah, but I get what that you're same thing could definitely happen again. But it's it's he's as safe as you can get, and we all have him at 16 in our rankings for the average. Um, and I think I think that'll put a put a wrap on Doug Baldwin. Let's go ahead and take a quick break here. All right, let's get back to these rankings. We got number 17. 17, which I, I think probably could have been 16. We gave Doug a, a whole lot of love there, and we kind of prefaced it a little bit. With, yeah, this next guy that we, when you start watching him, it's it's pretty silly. It's awesome. So yeah. we went, uh, we got Allen Robinson on the docket. Yeah, AR-15. AR-15. At AR-15. I like that. If you want to holler at him. Nice. I love it. He just needs to go somewhere where 15 isn't taken. Right. <laughs> so, right. He can, so he can keep his Twitter handle. Right. It's a strong, <laughs> strong to quite strong Twitter handle. Very strong. We need a machine gun sound right now. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a very good machine That was like a 50 <laughs> caliber. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible laugh by me as well. <laughs> all right, all right, let's settle down. <laughs> Everyone settle down. All right. Let's get into the what we like and what we saw about uh old Allen Robinson here. Obviously you had the 2015 as a sophomore there, which is a, a pretty uh tough show to to top there. 
especially with Blake Bortles as your quarterback. Right. Um, but I mean, as, as, as both of us, I think dug a little more into 16, you're going back. And I think because the bar was set so high. Yeah. From what I remember, 16 wasn't was good a dumpster at all. fire. Yeah. It was but terrible. It really wasn't that bad. No. Um, he did a little, he did less with the, around the same amount of targets, but it really, I don't think they were the same quality targets. I think Blake no Bortles kind of, you know, was, had taken shots from, 14 and 15, he was the most sacked quarterback in the league. Obviously, 15 was the big year that Allen Robinson had, and Al, it was kind of his coming out party. You can maybe attribute it to some of it of, of you know, nobody really knowing about Allen Robinson and, and a lot of fourth quarter kind of heaves and heaves all over the quarter, regardless of what quarter it was, mm -hmm. and, and kind of him showing up. And then 16 comes in, and when you watch the tape of what's the ball is going to Allen Robinson, even when he's open, He's, you know, he's having to climb up the ladder and grab those things or they're far right. They're far left. He's Super having to low. he's having to keep his toes in bounds and go catch it out of bounds. And he's doing all he's scooping it up out of the dirt. He's doing all these things. But also Blake's, you know, setting him up to take a couple of shots here and there, which, you know, it could be you, there's only so shots much, to your body, not right, like downfield. Right. Yeah, there's there's only so much, you know, a guy can take here. You, you kind of have you have more attempts. um, in in sixteen that then in fifteen out of out of Blake Bortles, but they're just they're for uh, you, you lose about five hundred yards in there, which is a decent right. drop off, especially with a, a receiver like Allen Robinson. Right. So in in fifteen he had eighty receptions for fourteen hundred yards and fourteen touchdowns. This is a ridiculous right. year. It's a huge fourteen's a huge number. Right. And then in two thousand sixteen he he still had thirty or sorry seventy three catches, but but only nine hundred yards and six touchdowns. Eight eighty three. Right. Right, it's almost 900 yeah. yards. There was a lot of a lot of highs and lows through that 150 targets that he had, um, which was good for ninth in the league. But they weren't consistent targets, right? So he had eight games with five or more targets, and he did well in all those games from a from a fantasy standpoint. Um, but then there were four games with three targets, three games with two targets, and then against Minnesota he had one target. So yeah. like, I don't know why they weren't getting this dude at least five targets a game, but they blew it because Blake Bortles was third in attempts, like you said, a lot, 627 in 2016, but he was 31st in completion percentage, 31st in yards per attempt, 30th in QBR. Like, this dude right. is faux good. Like, I, he's fake goods. I want to come back to that point I was making, how he got sacked the most in 14 and 15, which I think that kind of, again, makes you a little, probably a little quicker on the trigger, and, and I don't think Blake needs to be much quicker on the trigger, and it made yeah. him... Pretty, you know, maybe a little bit more volatile and inaccurate. Um, I think I think all that maybe plays in. I could be completely wrong, but that's kind of what I was seeing. I went back and watched a ton of 2016 tape on Allen Robinson just to see what the story was here. Um, and that, that's kind of what I was seeing, er erratic throws. And, and Blake's the, the offensive line in 16 still wasn't good for most of the season. When Marone took over, you saw the run game step up and the line get a little better for whatever reason. He is an offensive line kind of coach, offensive mind kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so I think all that kind of plays into to the bad the we say bad sixteen, but it really wasn't that bad of a sixteen. I think you your your Allen Robinson on a yearly basis is somewhere in between the fifteen and sixteen Allen Robinson. Right. Yeah, and I mean I'm all that that fifteen was was so silly that I just I just can't wait. I can't wait. I I personally want him to go somewhere else. I don't think I want him to stick around in Jacksonville. He's a free agent. Um, we were debating whether or not they could franchise tag him. The, the I was cap, reading something the cap about situation isn't great over there. It's not the best. They're going to have to to clear up some room. Um, whether or not they keep Blake Bortles, they did pick up Blake Bortles' fifth year option um, like forty eight hours before the deadline uh, last year. But that money's only guaranteed for injury, right. so he's not hurt. They can cut him. They could cut him. They could also cut Alan Hearns, which is probably a strong possibility. Right. But they you also have Marquise Lee, who's a free agent. Alan Robinson, who's a free agent. Um, so you, you're probably trying to bring one of those guys back, but then you have Westbrook and Keelan Cole, who you can pretty much get for peanuts. Yeah, they're um, paying them rookie contracts. And I would think Marquise Lee's probably cheaper than Allen Robinson, so if you wanted probably. to bring one back, you probably could bring Marquise back. Right. I don't know, just just spitballing here. Right. Yeah, and, and I don't think there's no way that, that Allen Robinson's going to hang around for another year of Blake Bortles. Right. Right? No, I mean, you, you have... You have a guy here in, in Blake who all the things that we just talked about, and he had a, a pretty good season for the most part this year, I guess, and he had a nice stretch run there near the back half of the season. But then you saw him kind of come unraveled mm -hmm. and be Blake Bortles the last couple of games. And then in this last playoff game that you saw, he wasn't really good. He did he did help them win. He ran around. <laughs> old, old Blake Vic. Really. He was, I don't know how he gained so much confidence <laughs> from 83 rushing yards, but... 
the fact that he had more rushing yards right. than passing yards would have discouraged defense, me a little. But. This defense is basically like a goaltender standing on his head in the playoffs for, mm-hmm. for hockey. That's a hockey reference. Yeah. In case you guys want. <laughs> well, what's hockey? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Some weird winter sport. Yeah. It'd um, be better if they played on grass instead of ice and use a, <laughs> use a football instead of a puck. But what, um, whatever. But I do I do think that if he ended up back in Jacksonville on a on a do on a high pitch, um, <laughs> that, I mean, I think he could thrive again. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I just... Even if Blake was still his guy, I don't think Blake would be his guy. I think that would have to be part of the deal of him coming back here, you know, kind of making that. He knows what the deal is with Blake. He's got to. I mean, you you know, you know, everyone knows that he knows what the deal is with Blake. Like when 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 a guy like uh, Alan Alan Robinson, Robinson. whose character both of us have looked into it and seems to be, you know, a pretty good guy. And it isn't like one of these diva wide receivers who is like, just get me the damn ball. And I'm upset if you didn't throw it to me, you know, once every drive. He's, you know, you, you, the famous sound clip during the summer was, man, you know, just put the fucking ball in bounds, man. Right. Like, that's a frustrated guy. That's that's at l- months, if not years of aggravation. Building from a guy, up. Right. From a guy who Festering. typically probably isn't that outspoken of a of a of a guy. And then to add <laughs> fuel to that fire, more of a funny thing than. But you got you got Allen Robinson lying on the field writhing in pain torn because he's ACL. got a torn ACL and Blake Bortles comes over and gives him the double tap on, on that injured knee like up oh, rub some dirt on it Bob oh well, we need God. you next <laughs> like I'm out of here yeah I am out of here yeah I mean I, he's he this dude wants to learn and he wants to get better he wants to be coached like I watched various sound bites and clips and videos of him where he's in practice running routes and stuff and he's he's going up to Alan Hearns and he's asking him about his route and was he was he doing it the right way and, and he's right. he's an information gatherer right. he wants to he wants to get better he's and, he, and he's humble and he's driven and that's why which he didn't have to be he's a big guy who right. was a you know quote unquote like a vertical kind of guy who had that part of his game pretty much down and ready to roll coming into the league and he you could just kind of hang out on that and rely on that if, if, if he really wanted to be, but he he's not that kind of guy. He wants to learn, like you said. Right, and he and he, he is that. He is an awesome vertical threat. Like, I love the fact that he can make your play or make your day in one play. He's got that 80-yard touchdown in him, but he's, he's not just a vertical threat. Like, he's a route runner. You know, he's he's perfecting that craft, and he's he's tough. You can put him in the slot. He lined up in the slot plenty. Um, he'll make the tough catch over the middle. He's awesome in tight spaces, which is is awesome in the red zone. You can throw him a fade. He'll go up in the air and attack that ball, but he's not just the fade guy. He can fake that fade and hit you with a quick slant or the or the whip route. I mean, he's, his feet are phenomenal. They're yeah, that, so that was, that was the first thing that I noticed when I was watching tape and then going back and watching some practice. You got there's some tape of him in practice and stuff like that. Is right. Is how fast that feet that footwork is. Yeah, I mean he's he's so good up high in the air where very few people can even get on that plane. But then you know he'll go down low and dig that bad Bortles ball out of the dirt too. Um, and then and then he, he's solid after the catch. Oh yeah, uh, might be one of his best qualities. Like, right. He's he he's tough to bring down. He's he's relentless. You can have him by the ankle and the foot, and he'll drag you as long as it takes to try to get free. I saw multiple times where he did that. Um, going back to sixteen. And watching all that tape time and time again on third and, and whatever and and what the times they went for it on fourth down, it was Allen Robinson every time. And and nine times out of ten, he picked it up for him when when they really needed it, regardless of what the situation is and where he was going, you know, in the route and all that kind of stuff. He 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 was ready to roll. You put the ball near him, he knows it's a big situation. He'll you know, he's doing everything he can to, you know, help help his guys stay on the field. Um the, the 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 biggest and best thing I think that I like about this guy is is the thing that I picked up the most was I think that he's a really high end cheater like he's yeah. really good at cheating yeah uh, which I think is is a necessary thing you got you ain't cheating you ain't trying right to be a, a a good receiver in this league or to be a, a good D back in this league you have to you have to cheat you have to hold you have to push you have to do all that but you have to be good at it discreetly and the, right discreetly, discreetly which is what really is really shows up to me with Allen Robinson you have a guy who is is pretty long and and it's easy to to identify if he's extending that arm and using it to gain separation i.e. you saw Mike uh, Evans this year 
a couple yeah. of times get called for some pass interference because it's kind of hard to miss. He's a big dude, but he's not doing it in the right place. He's he's every time you see that pass interference coming out, he's engaging high with the defender. Like Allen right. Robinson is. You saw that with Kelvin Benjamin in right, the playoffs, right? Allen Robinson is really good at discreetly keeping that hand low near like the low torso kind of hip waist area and just giving you that little shove when he's either at the top of his route trying to gain separation. He'll 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 kind of give you that like hard jab kind of to the torso a little bit. That's it's 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 a nice little nuance, but and it's also when he's, you know, there's a there's a ball in the air or a jump ball and, and they're both guys are kind of hand checking. He nine times out of ten is the guy who gets the last shove in. And it's it's never like a big noticeable shove, but it's just enough. He's a strong dude. He's a physical frame to just it's it, it's just something that is is a lot of guys don't possess, and I think he's really good at it. I know it sounds ridiculous that you have to be a good cheater, but like no, it makes that, that's kind of what I came away with. At the end, that was my biggest takeaway yeah. from watching him of what he can do. And you, you couple all that with being that vertical threat, which, you know, again, why he is good at going up and getting the ball is because he can jump, but he's also good at winning that hand checking battle. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do. Any of the good DBs are going to hold you. They're right. going to pull you. They're going to push fight. you. You got to fight right. your way off of that. And, and a lot of the times, if you fight your way off of that, you're going to get called for it, especially right. if you're not doing it the right way. And I think he does it, you know, extremely well. And, uh, you know, it's one of my the, my biggest takeaways from watching as much uh, Allen Robinson as I just watched. Another another thing about Allen Robinson, I think this dude just has star quality about him. He he has a great smile. I think that I, you like the smile. I Good. like the smile, man. I, I could see him on on commercials. I mean, he's some people are speculating whether he should go try and get like a one year prove it deal. I think he can probably go get as much money. Somebody's as he, gonna want to pay him. I mean, I don't see why they would. This isn't like an Alshon Jeffrey type thing. It's not a it's not a Terrell Pryor type thing right. where they, they need to go do a one year prove it. He deal. wasn't injured beforehand. He had some really good years. He is injured now, but I mean, I guess that could be kind of your prove it. Year, I, guess. I guess, but you but know, he's so far removed from it, right? Right. It happened, it happened week, week one. one. Yeah. So he he's gonna be healthy. I have no qualms about his work ethic to get back in shape and and come back stronger than he was. And he's been. I'm sure he's been in the film room and he's been improving himself in right. in other ways besides you know, practicing and playing football. And I just think that, you know, he's, he, if he went somewhere like we, you know, we've mentioned it several times. We want him to go over to San Francisco with Jimmy. If they, they got a ton of cap room over they there. Do. I mean, they're going to have to eat up some with, with keeping Jimmy and paying him around. I they got to do that. I saw though, right? a, a local radio thing. I think it was in, in San Francisco today, uh, just sent out a tweet talking about how, you know, if he, you know, we're going to, we're going to lube up and, and you be gentle on us, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> I could see San Fran starting like a GoFundMe account to try and help out and pay for some of that contract. I mean, they got a ton of cap room, and I don't know if you were Allen Robinson really why you wouldn't want to go there. Although, you know, Jacksonville, the the thing about Jacksonville is he's been sitting on the sidelines watching this thing kind of all Evolve. come together now. And if he did get a quarterback, they could be a pretty scary team. Yeah, like if Kirk came over. Yeah, or, you know. I don't know if they got the cap room to sign Kirk, but. I'm sure they could figure it out if, if they had a chance to. Yeah. Um, but. He can do so many things well. I think he just needs a chance to be that elite red zone threat that we know he can be, and we kind of saw it in 2015. Um, and hopefully we'll kind of see that in the next landing spot. Yeah. He can do everything else, but the red zone is really where you're going to get right. the most out of this guy. I mean, I don't want to say the most because I think he's great all but over that's the where field. But that's where that's your where consistent you, right. fantasy production is going to make your day and on these touchdowns. That's what he easily brings to the table i think right and i'd have no all qualms those things that we just mentioned if you wanted to draft him even higher than 16 right. I, overall I, you I know i think i if, if i'm on the or clock 17 if i'm on the him. clock and had to make the decision i think a lot of nine times out of ten as i've played this scenario out in my head trying to make these rankings like i think i'm going alan robinson over doug baldwin right um but like you said when you walk, go back and then watch alan robinson which you love and then you watch the doug baldwin you're like ah oh, damn this dude's a this dude's a guarantee, right? At least for you know two, three years, I think. Yeah, I mean, so I guess tough. once we know Allen Robinson's landing spot, and if it's a good one, and he's got a good quarterback, then he could shoot up well into the top fifteen for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You got anything else on? No, no I think I'm good. I think I'm ready to get into these kind of. I think it's a controversial, well, maybe not controversial bottom three of this top twenty, but definitely maybe the last two guys are at least the way we have them. We've, I know we've. You and I have flip flopped multiple times just on yeah. trying to get these rankings together. So I'm it's excited tough. to get into this back half. I do wish Big Co was here because he has a little bit different take on some of these guys. And and as as you do as and everybody does as you get further down the line here, 
you, you know, everyone starts to have their kind of opinions. These are kind of chalk in, in whatever order you want to take them in. So. Sure. Yeah. We're just going to try and lay it down and, and make a call and, and then we'll, yeah. we'll probably flip flop as the summer goes on. But this is a fun exercise. And let's go ahead and take a quick break here. We'll be back with more Mary to the game. Stefan Diggs still thinks you're overrated. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I did I did some research for this guy, but I didn't go too crazy because I knew old Jay Wayne, old Clemson Jay Wayne over there would go ham on this dude. Yeah. So our consensus ranking at 18 is Sammy Watkins. Sammy. What do you before we start out? Well, no, go, I'll let you go first. Go ahead. No, you give us, no, no. Give us some Sammy. Give me, give me, give us why we should love some Sammy Watkins at 18. He is only 24. Well, there's one. You took the words right out of my mouth. You took the words right out of my mouth. Don't kiss me. I'm still it a little nasally. It wasn't when I was kissing I'm you. I'm still a little nasally. We got some nasal fantasy football <laughs> for second week in a row. I apologize. I cannot shake this head cold. There's a pressure in my head. At least I don't have the flu, though. Take that kind of rejection. <laughs> well, Sammy's coming off a bit of a down year. Yeah. He, he was traded at the last minute out of yep. Buffalo, so he didn't have a full off season with his team. Oh, uh, you know, if Big Cut was here, this would be his favorite thing to talk about. Didn't get an off season with his squad, which is a very fair assessment. Yeah. You know, didn't no, he develop uh, that rapport right, with Goff? Right. Late, late arriver. Yeah. Only late arriver. <laughs> <laughs> it's really in the, it's in the core. I've been trying to figure out how to get that R right where you need it because sometimes I just force the, the pleasure, but it's you run out of air too early. It's got to it, come from the plums. It's got to come from deep down in your plums. You got to feel it. Take the plums to market. You got to <laughs> take them to market. <laughs> Two for one on plums. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be down. You got to feel it. It's got to be pleasure. <laughs> if it's not pleasurable. <laughs> All right, Sammy Watkins. Back, back to back to Sammy. Here People we go. were like, "Well, these guys just shut the hell just up. Just shut the hell up and tell me about Sammy already." So he only caught 39 balls for 593 yards, but he did score eight touchdowns. Eight of them were for touchdowns. Eight touchdowns. That is a solid number. And he One off his record of nine and 15. Which is a solid 15. Right. Solid 15 which to is put up. probably some of the reason why he retains his value the way he does, because you've seen shimmers of being special. It's crazy how he retains that value, I don't right? think there's been a player that retains value as well as Sammy Watkins. Every as year he gets a free as pass. As long as I've been playing Dynasty, maybe. He gets a new clean slate every year he's Man, a shiny new object the haters grow a little year. but there's the guy people stay strong on sammy yeah there's you definitely not 12 haters in the room no definitely not um but the the thing to me is that he stayed completely healthy all year long like that's the key point to me because that's really been the biggest knock on him throughout his career he is a screw foot guy he you had know, you don't usually like this i don't like guys. the screw foot guys um but i've come around I came around. I'm, I'm I'm backing off a Dez now again. I think, but not because of a screw foot. Um, and I think I'm backing off of, of Julio a little bit, but not because it's more of everything about Julio and the age. And and, and I mean, he's still really high up there. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, you're backing off of him to like five or six. Right. You know? Exactly. Uh, but 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 Sammy to 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 come off of of a foot surgery and he missed a lot of that. Uh, f- sixteen. Sixteen. And I, you know, I'm not sure why the Bills didn't want to keep him. They didn't pick up his fifth year option. They tri- they shipped him out. Um, but but he played all year long. And and he's he's a guy that's dealt with the soft tissue issues too in the past. Like like much like other quick quick twitch at- athletes, he's dealt with groin, hamstring, and calf strains, which are all mus- muscle issues. Right. But he didn't show up on a single injury report all of 2017. Is that a fact? Because I that's thought I thought huge. he had an ankle thing for a, for a little bit. Uh, according to uh, Player Profiler, there were no injury oh, that's reports the gospel, so reported. We're going to go with that. Well, it is when it is what I want it to be. <laughs> right. Isn't that how when we do it? When it supports it? my Isn't that how e- theory. Yeah, exactly. That's how everything goes <laughs> in just about anything in life. So Right. Um, Except for drops. Yeah. I don't go there for drops. No, don't go there for drops. I don't know who's charting drops, but I think they're wildly They're, they're off on the drops. Every single... there's a, They inflate drops. One yeah. drop is two drops there for the most yeah, part. They're... they're, they're his his brand likes to put people down. Right. We're we're about they're about finding the hate. We want to find the reasons to like the dude. And then when you hate, we like to we're, hate on your hate. The only <laughs> hate we want to throw is towards the hate. We like to hate on the hate. Anyway, all right. So Sammy was fifty sixth in targets with only seventy this year, but he was seventeenth in red zone receptions at seven. Um, and I think he had like two long bombs, but the rest of those were like red all, zone all inside the ten or something like that. Right. Um, pro Football Focus. 
speaking of drops, charted him with zero. The old goose egg, in a good way. Zero drops. This dude is a crisp route runner. He wins at all levels of the field. He's super fast. He's like a 4-4-3 dude. He's so quick yeah. off the line of scrimmage. That first step is a doozy. Right. Um, but but if you press him, right. his hands are as strong as they come, and he's good at fighting off the line of scrimmage and throughout the route to gain that separation. Um, he's he's obviously a burner, but he's he's good against the sideline. Yeah, he's got more than just the vertical game. Right. Into, into he, his he can awesome. dive. He can make the one-handed catch. But what's really impressive to me is how basically he's a center fielder out there. He's a great Put ball. Me in, coach. Right. He's a great I'm ball ready to play. tracker. Ooh, tracker. That's uh, he, a new one. I don't think that's a first. Right? He makes some of the most amazing over the head catches. Like he looks like Andrew Jones out there. Remember Andrew Jones? Oh yeah. I mean, you're a Braves guy. You must be a Braves guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, he he's he's so fast he can get underneath almost any ball. And man, 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 remember when Andrew Jones was good? Remember before he he wasn't able to bat his weight, you know? <laughs> he really fell off offensively, but he never fell off defensively. He, yeah. As soon as that ball was cracked, he was like off in sprinting in the direction of the... Like he just knew where it was going to be. Yeah. Well, that's Sammy Watkins out there playing center field for the Rams. Um, he... he uh, I, Back to the Bills thing. I don't know why they wanted to trade him, but they... they they got rid of a lot of dudes. They hate Tyrod Taylor. They let go of Hogan, Bobby Woods. Oh, Mikey, Bob Woods. Mikey How'd that Two work Gills. out for you? Mike Two Gills, see ya. Right. So I don't want to hold that That's against Mike him. That's Mike Gillisley, in case you were wondering. I don't want to hold it against him. You, you could look at program. that as a negative. Like, these guys, the Bills moved up to draft Sammy at four overall. Yeah, that was the old guard. They wanted a changing of the guard. Then, boys, what they did is they wanted to get rid of everybody and bring in nothing but slot receivers. Right. <laughs> boys were like, give me, give us, we'll take all the league slot receivers, and yeah. then almost near the end of the season, we'll take Kelvin Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> but let's go with Peterman. P yeah. And we're going to play Peterman for a game because uh, he's the savior. Yeah. I don't get it, but I don't want to. I, I think. You could look at it as a negative that they wouldn't want to pick up his fifth year option and that they'd want to trade him, but I just I don't really like what the Bills how they operate. I mean, they're a good team. They obviously made it to the playoffs. Offensively though, unless it's McCoy, it's McCoy doo -doo. Or bust. A right. couple of doodoo streaks. Right. Um, some more on Sammy. He's a quiet, humble dude, which you don't always see in such a talented, touted dude. Right. Um, he's a hard worker, he's a student of the game. I've never heard uh, Dabo Sweeney, the head coach of, of the Clemson Tigers, I've never heard him talk with such high praise about a freshman. When Sammy came in as a true freshman, he said Dabo was saying he was like always asking questions. He's always writing things down. He carried around a notebook that he always had his head buried in, and like he was just nonstop studying and constantly trying to learn how to perfect his craft. And he he you see those subtle nuances show up in his route running and his game and his game preparation. Um, he's still only 24 years old. He's a free agent. He's open to staying in Los Angeles. I think I'd really like that. Um, and it's, they're saying that they're probably going to franchise tag him, which is, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, that, um, that's just happened today. Right. Like, that just kind of came out. Just and came I think out. some people are probably a little mixed on, on whether or not he should be back there. But I, I think if you give him a whole other season, An off I mean, season. obviously you have Cooper. There's some weapons there. You got Cooper everywhere, really. You got Cooper Cup, who really, really flashed Cooper well out of the Cup. slot. Um, Taking credit for that. Yeah. I was all over some Cooper Cup. All right. Yeah, just based off his highlight Never tape. Gonna let him keep you down. Music. I, don't think, I don't think that was his. What was his? Uh, we need a hero. We need a hero. <laughs> yeah. And then Bobby Woods came over over the Bobby Woods just lighten it up. He's he. I mean, he's not going to be too too far down this list. You know, way higher than he ever. You know, you're not getting him in the seventeenth round this year. I can tell you that. Right. That ain't happening. And then you got Gurley and and Gurley. The, the tight ends. You got Everett and and Higby who's still around. So and Josh Reynolds kind of waiting in the wing. So this this program could kind of go all over the place. Yeah. But, I mean, when you say mixed feelings, like I was, I have written here that I'd be open to him going somewhere else where maybe they didn't have so many options and, and, and to an offense that didn't work so well spreading the ball around so much. Right. You know, they're kind of like the Eagles. They spread the ball all over the place and, and, and take going, what's open. And going back and watching some Sammy, which, you know, they, they will definitely do that kind of thing and take kind of the easiest matter. But I saw a lot of times where he was, was you know, fairly open and, and just didn't get him the ball, you know, for whatever reason. But just something that I kind of... Saul out there and I, I think I think as as they go on and if he did stay another year you know I think you would see an increase in uh in, in some more volume over there well they you know they gave up a second round pick to get him 
they definitely got their money's worth in the red zone and, and, and in the end zone. And in helping all those other guys out and, and developing rapports and all that. Sammy's taken most of the attention of the defense. Right. I, I don't know what was going on, and I'm not speaking. I don't. I have no idea if this. But uh, McVay came in there and he 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 picked up some pieces. But you know, it seemed like I needed one more guy to kind of draw the defense's eye from. And make them kind. Of, you know, you can't really double anybody else but Sammy. If you're not nope. going to double Sammy, you're going to, you know, you should throw to him. Right. So, and he could be double coverage too. He right. Can get behind you. He can track that deep ball. So I like the Rams' offense. I like what they got going on. I like his ability to 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 sustain a floor with his touchdowns. He showed the ability to score touchdowns. He's open in his route running. He's he's still so young, and he finally stayed healthy. He didn't deal with these these nagging, you know, soft tissue, soft kind of. tissue injuries no, or the no foot. foot. Yeah. So, so you're you're basically what I you're feel get, good about Sammy. What you're getting with Sammy and what you're drafting with Sammy is is you're still you know you you got a great production at the end of that 15 season where you saw him really come alive. It was a ridiculous end of that and season. And then you got some big touchdowns in this season. So you've seen some flashes of greatness from Sammy Watkins. You're just hoping that he can put an entire season together and and finally you can reap the benefits from taking Sammy at this point in time. What I really struggled with was if I'm on the clock at this point in time and you're telling me that I have to draft a receiver with all these guys left, I have a, I, I have a little bit of a tough time putting Sammy on my team because I just don't know if I can rely on him to be the starter that I want him to be at this kind of pick. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, I get it. I get I get it because you but there's so much upside and that's right. kind of what you're going you, I do honestly believe that he can be a really special player like I think he possesses like the Clemson tape is outrageous he was yeah. ridiculous from and that's true what everybody freshman was on his really his rookie year was was pretty solid and, yeah and the end of 15 was was awesome and you seem to be just kind of chasing those ghosts of Sammy past and yeah. hoping that it could be ghosts of Sammy present yeah, you know, sooner his, than later. His playing style is is physical. He's a physical dude, especially after the catch. Um, you saw that in college and in the pros. Yeah. And you listen, you watch the if you watch him mic'd up. You know those those pads are thumping. I mean, he is out there. Clickety clack, clickety clack. Right, he's out there battling, and uh, so that can lead you to getting nicked up here and there. But maybe he's figured something out. You know, in his eating regimen and his off the field work regimen. He he's he's gonna figure out what works right. It's just crazy when you combine a special elite type of talent with a work ethic, and I yeah. think he has that, and it's it's coming together. And you've seen enough to to his value is sustainable, right? And it could ge- go even higher. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would like to see him go somewhere else, but if he stayed in L.A. It wouldn't be the end of the world for me, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I like offenses that can sustain drives. You, right. You know, like stay on the field, more opportunities for you guys. Absolutely. I don't like how they, were, a lot of games, they were blowing dudes out and yeah. then they weren't passing it. Right. They just lean on Gurley. Yeah, which Gurley's so good. Which they should have done in this last game is Hope lead, he on, traded him. lead on Gurley some more right. in, this, in this playoff game. McVay's admitted to not leaning right. on Gurley enough and that got him got in a trouble. little too fancy. But the, really, that was Farrell Cooper's fault they lost. Yeah, that game. well, I mean, you didn't execute. Like you've been executing most of the year, and special teams fell apart. A bunch of drops. Like golf didn't play especially well, but he didn't play terrible for his first time in the playoffs, especially being so young. And, and Sammy and he, probably could have caught that touchdown at the yeah, end. Yeah, he got held, but he did get held. But I mean, Cooper Cup dropped a couple. Robert Woods, I think, dropped one or two. Some tight yeah. ends dropped some, but like the, there were some ready. drops. Yeah, there was just it just didn't all how it was going. They were executing really well most of the season, and they just got into the playoffs, and it just didn't seem right. like they were you know, executing as well as they could. And they're a really young team and, and look where they were last year to where they are now. Right. Very, very good turnaround. And right. And for those, those that don't believe the coaching matters and, and like, you can't just pin it all in the, this playoff game. If they'd have lost uh, one more game and missed the playoffs, who cares? We they still, still would have had a great been, season. Right. We still would be they talking two, about how three more games. awesome they still had a great season. of a turnaround and they made. You can, Yeah, they picked up Whitworth, which was a great, and, and O'Sullivan, which were t- Whitworth was a perennial all-pro, a good r- r- pro bowler, great player. <clears throat> we talked about it way back in like February yep. when we were talking about, about how much that he could impact this team and how it's a good veteran presence. And, you know, we actually, I went back and listened to it. We kind of goofed on him a little bit. Like, I don't know why he's going over there. They're so bad. Right. And he's 35. Why yeah. would you be why would you, wouldn't you want to go to like to this? a, you know, a better, and he knew something if, we did. Damn if he didn't turn that, that ship around, you know, pretty quick, which we were the, like, you were one of the only people that I've heard not to bury, 
you know, Goff Jared and Goff Rams. and this yeah. Rams I just, offense. I watched a lot of Rams football, and it, I don't think it was as bad as what was coming up. And, but that's a story for another time on uh, story time with <laughs> Uncle Casey. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that you got any more for Sammy Watkins? No, I, mean, I think I went as hard as I could. I mean, and I'm, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm with you. That was our basically our average ranking at 18. We yep. were all pretty much consensus across the board, really, with Sammy there, because it's just kind of like you really there's there's some proven guys behind him, but that what the, you're looking at the upside a ton here with Sammy Watkins. I guess maybe you could say like a Corey Davis, or maybe you could take a Juju, or maybe you could take a Thielen here. But or Alshon or, you know, kind of, there, you kind of could be all over the board. I think I think Sammy for us obviously ended up being the consensus here. So, yeah, I feel good about it. Yeah, I feel good about Sammy. I feel better about him than I have in a while. And I think it's looking up. And regardless of what he does, if he gets franchised, I think that would just be to stall in free agency to pro probably try and extend him long term. I don't think they'd want to yeah. give up a second round pick and all this money just to let him walk the year after that. Sure. So. I think he, I could see him being a guy that's franchised and then signs a long term deal before that that uh, extension deadline. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him get out of Dodge, but yeah, what are you gonna do? I could go either way. I could Let's, go either uh, way, and that's why that's part of why his value is up there because sure. you could you right. could see him going somewhere else. You Again. could see him staying. So that's Absolutely. part of that sure. sustainability. All right, so let's let's wrap this up here. Let's take a break. We'll we'll, we'll get to the last two guys who you know I know we we kind of mentioned it going out on the last one. These guys are, you know, I, I feel like this is a, you kind of could throw a whole bunch of guys here in the, in the next 10 spots, really. Yeah. It's so going to be tough. Let's take a break. We'll gather our thoughts, maybe take a short bathroom break, gather and, our composure, uh, pop a fresh one and get into it. All right. Let's get into Corey Davis at number 19. Oh yeah. That requires a fresh pop. Freshy. Give me a nice freshy old Corey Davis. He's fresh. He is fresh. Fresh off a of birthday. He's a birthday boy. Happy freaking birthday. They say it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Davis turns the ripe old age of 23 today. Yeah. January 11th, 2018. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. Old Corey Davis. He's kind of like that prototype prospect that everyone wants. And, you know, maybe some people are down on him right now. Should I go get, put on my birthday suit? <laughs> No, please no? don't put on okay. your birthday suit. All right, sorry. You save that. Yeah. <laughs> For my birthday. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'll cut you off. No, no, I just want to get good. that in I there. Mean, I mean, maybe, maybe there I've, I've seems like there is some people who are down on Corey Davis, and maybe some of those people draft him, so maybe send out some stuff on some feelers for him. But I do think overall Corey Davis has retained his value, and I will probably continue to retain his value even if he doesn't absolutely crush this year. So part of the reason why I'm pretty comfortable with having him here, um, but then – you know, going back and watching kind of what happened when he was out there and playing at least game one when he seemed like maybe he was the freshest he had been. And then near the end of the season, I thought he looked good against Rams week 16. But in between there, there was all sorts of things that kind of went down, starting with the off season. Right. Yeah. He's dealt with a bunch of injuries. He he had ankle. He had a high ankle sprain, a severe high ankle sprain. Which kept him out of the combine, basically. Right. He had surgery on it in January. He is said to have two torn ligaments in that angle, ankle. So that, that wasn't good. He didn't come. He didn't uh, obviously he didn't go to the combine and he didn't show up for the pro day. He skipped that altogether. So there was like no metrics to base any of your opinions on for him other than tape, <laughs> which if you actually watch the tape, it's ridiculous. You need a hero. Right. <laughs> um, so he had that ankle injury. He, he gets drafted still fourth overall. I think it was, top, you know, he was the first wide receiver off the board in the first round. That ankle injury didn't deter the Titans from taking him. Uh, then he, he injured his hamstring in August, early August. The MRI came up negative, but he missed pretty much all of training camp. Same hamstring as the ankle? I don't know. They don't usually tell you which one it is because maybe they don't want you to know so that the other team can't could go have been after overcompensating it. overcompensating for the ankle injury. It could have definitely been a compensation thing. I know. Um, after I came back from, from an ACL, like I had some hamstring issues and, and some calf issues just because you're, you're trying to, you know, Make sure you don't hurt that thing. Right. So he missed all of training camp, and he didn't play at all in the preseason. Um, he played like one and a half games to start the year before re-aggravating that injury in the third quarter of week two. He misses five more weeks plus the bye, and then returns in week nine. Um, but I, I want to take it back to that week one game that he had. Yeah, and before because, you go there. Yeah, go ahead. I want to I just give, give Big Co another shout-out here that, again, 
he would be he would probably be giving you a good harping on how you know you don't you don't get any time with your number one Marcus is a young quarterback number two they they have had no time to build up any sort of rapport whatsoever whatsoever no timing no you know figuring out all the little nuances to Corey Davis's game and all that kind of stuff so. and he even signed his rookie contract a little bit late I think it was like a day into training camp or something so he didn't even you know it wasn't like he was there early and was the first one to sign like right. he was behind the eight ball due to injury and and all that for his whole off season and yeah. all of the preseason. So comes in to week one and he's like running all these different routes from all these different spots in the field. Just it's looking crazy. Like a stallion. The first pass he catches, it's a it's a go route and he's got all this space to the to the sideline and he kind of leans inside and then breaks it outside and Marcus throws him a nice ball and he goes up and towers over it, towers over the defender and makes the catch. Um so right off the rip, you see his size and speed coming into play down the field. Uh, the next target, it's a crossing route. So they get him involved on a shallow cross. He doesn't convert the third down. It was pretty good defense on that particular play. But it's you against see the Raiders, him, right? Right. Yeah. Raiders weak weak secondary, weak defense. Other than yeah. you know Mac crushing it. So maybe David Amerson had him most of that game. He did, and he was he was working him. Um, next catch, it's a double move that ultimately ends in a comeback route, but he fakes the corner route just for like a few steps at the top of his route. He gets the defender all turned around before before he makes his break back inside, and like the defender's nowhere near him to, to defend the ball, and right. he makes a nice catch. 11 yards, first down. Uh, the, next, the next catch, he's lined up in the slot, right? So you're like, okay, now they're, they're moving them all over the place. He runs that... Julian Edelman whip route where he gives him a little hesitation move off the off the release and he kind of presses into the defender to, to gain that leverage breaks the route inside like it's a short in and then he breaks it back outside and by that time he's gotten several yards of separation and he takes he takes a short catch and turns it into another 11 yard gain right with most of that damage coming after the catch so where's this out of the slot or the that's out of the slot right, right. so he's already shown you the kind of the drag across he showed on, me on some short yardage stuff, so that that's another reason you know he 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 set you up for that kind of that body lean and that like he sh set you up for that little inside drag there and then boom, yep, crush that little whip. It was great, good, great looking route. Yep, and then and then at the next target he runs a curl route, um, and Marcus Maria throws throws the ball outside, and so he 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 breaks inside the ball's thrown outside. So then you see that that lack of connection, like they weren't on the same page right. there. That's that's a little bit of that on, rustiness, but, right? You don't know if it's on Marcus or if it's on him. Sure, it's probably on him. Um, but you know what we know about this dude coming out of college is that he has massive hands, long arms, vertical speed, and he's nasty after the catch. And then in his first game action ever, with no preseason or any offseason really to speak of, you see him win vertically. You right. see him win over the middle, out of the slot. He's got the comeback route working. He's he's. You know, working off that vertical threat, you see him creating yards after the catch. Right. And it's like everything you wanted to see, he showed you right there in week one, and he had no practice to even get to that point. And he right. just, that prototypical 6'3", 210 pound WR1 is just, it's just yeah. laid out there well, in front of you. The, the thing, like, the crazy thing is, is like there is a lot of rookies who come into this league who, A, without any of that training camp or preseason or any of that, they 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 don't even have that route tree right. in their arsenal to begin with, and he's and, had and that to, back to college, right? And to know? know that and to and to be able to execute like that is is I think super unbelievable, impressive. right? This is a really really humble dude who's who's uh, seems to be extremely smart and and diligent with with his time and his efforts. He's, he's thirty one on the Wonderlick. Yeah, well, you gotta love smart, that smart you guy. Gotta love that, and it doesn't necessarily really mean anything, right? But, right. You know, that, that's Patrick's just, seems, really smart. Seems like something that you know. He he absorbs things like a sponge and and adjusts very quickly. Um, so some of the things that I picked up, just I, all those kind of same things. I, I rewatched most of the games as well. Um, I, I but I, I my big thing was takeaway was interviews and and just listening to him speak. He's very well spoken. Yeah, uh, very humble guy. Uh, and just you know his biggest thing was like you know I just I just want to be able to pick up, pick my game speed up, get faster and and adjust to the speed of the NFL. You know as well as I can and, and I, I thought week one looked really good and then he probably wasn't really super healthy and he came back week 
nine ten, and it wasn't that impressive. But by the end you of the could, year, he, he looked a little sluggish. You know, you watch him week ten against the Bengals, where he had ten targets, and he was. I think he caught four of them for thirty something yards or something, and and, and like. He just looked a little sluggish, you right? Know? Which he is looked- to be expected. This is a rookie, and a guy who hadn't, you know, he's coming back off of. That's a pretty serious injury Severe all hamstr- around. Yeah, yeah. He pulled his hamstring, and that's what that's what gets you by on on these explosions, you know. Right. Um. So I, I, I think uh, I think I'm I'm pretty much everything I needed to see from Corey Davis. I kind of saw from him. Obviously, getting back into kind of the Marcus Mariota thing. He's still super young. Still, still, you know, learning, still figuring things out. Um, you, you kind of took a step back a little bit this year. Absolutely, you, you had a you had a guy who last year was extremely efficient in the red zone. Um, didn't didn't throw any interceptions. I still don't think he threw any interceptions. I don't this think year. so because they've still they still try to jinx him every time he gets in the red zone. They're like but he's never throwing a red zone interception. He threw a ton of touchdown passes in, in a tight window last year, which was one of the most imp- in the tight, you know, once that field tightens up, usually the younger guys struggle in that area and he, right. he excelled in that area. Um, but this year he comes with 13 or more interceptions and touchdowns this year, 15 picks and 13 touchdowns or something along those lines, which, you know, which is a little bit of a, of a step back. And, and you saw a great year two from him year three, which is where you hope to see a huge improvement for whatever reason. It just wasn't quite all there. I don't know how healthy was Mariota really was all season. He's a tough guy. He's also a leader, really smart guy. I would like to see, obviously, a, you know, they won this playoff game last week and you were kind of hoping that, not that I want to see the Titans lose, but you were kind of hoping that maybe you could see a coaching change here. Yeah. Um, and maybe see a little bit more of a exotic kind of right. non-smash mouth of of, yeah. <laughs> of a cornucopia of different plays and usages and maybe going a little faster and using Mariota. Right. And, you know, obviously you'll get Derrick Henry a little more involved moving forward. Um, so who looked awesome in that playoff game. Um, I'm with you with the coaching change. I don't necessarily like the play calling. Uh, I don't think that they're utilizing the, those skill position players as much as they could. If you just look at the numbers, like you could be really down on Marcus Mariota and you could be down on Corey Davis because he had a. I think it's a huge buy low opportunity for Mariota. Absolutely, this season. and Corey Davis because yeah, sure. his value can can only go up. I mean, he 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 struggled with health and then he finally kind of picked it up. And you see a nice game in Week 16 versus the Rams. He had not uh, six catches for 91 yards. Yeah, I I, I thought that tape looked pretty solid he was yeah. all over the place doing kind of what you saw in week one right and uh capped that, it off that was that was right. a solid showing because right. you could be pretty down on him because he never like i played Corey davis in my lineup for weeks expecting this blow up week to happen and it just never happened and like i, I couldn't play him week 16 yeah, the I end benched of the season, him. you had some injuries and you were yeah right well yeah i mean in the 12 man dynasty you know, your your Corey Davis, your your high rookie picks, you're probably wanting to you know, when injuries start hitting and Allen Ro- I had Allen Robinson season, go down yeah. and, and you know, people Amari are banged Cooper, up not playing, not playing well, well and missing well, and games missing as game, well. You know, so yeah, I needed some Corey Davis and I played him a few weeks and you know I Tevin Coleman was missing time here and there for you too, Yeah, so. yeah. And I mean I made it I made it to the championship game. Yeah. And I I, t- I plugged Tevin Coleman that week instead of Corey Davis and they got me about the same points. Um uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, see, but it was great to see Corey Davis have that game, yeah. and, it, and and maybe had he not had that game, it'd be an even more by low uh, time here for you right now. But as far as Mariota goes, like it's absolutely by low because as bad as it seemed like it was, he still was putting his team in position to win right. the game at the end of the game. And the defense was fantastic; they were great against the run. They started off real poor against the pass, but they tightened that down. No pun intended. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, Marcus will have his bad spots in the games, but he, he will typically, if, if there's a chance to win the game, I, I you know, he's been pretty good. Obviously, it was it was pretty lucky on this last go around with the with the batted ball back to himself and scoring. But I mean, threw a touchdown pass to himself. But that is crazy. It's crazy. And that, but I mean, he's just a team guy he's a, and and the effort that he's going to put forward and, and just springing the block to, to spring that run at the, that's that I think just really encapsulates the kind of guy he was. And they say there isn't a player that's ever played with Marcus Mariota who won't go 
to bat for him and just say how he's the best teammate ever and and you know just a really good guy and and all those kind of things and you know some of that doesn't account for anything but I think he's got all the tools necessary to make Corey Davis a really good player and they can grow and learn together and there's a there's a talented roster all throughout the Titans organization right now yep. so it's something to be really excited about from the about. offensive line to the running right. game to the defense and it's kind of been like well last year you you thought it was going to make us or two years ago you thought and then this year you thought that oh uh, you know you saw a little bit of a step forward and they were exotic smash mouth in it and running running the crap out of the ball through that offensive line and it started off a little shaky offensive line wise but I think they tightened up a little bit um, so nothing to be discouraged about in the Titans organization except for maybe the coach coming back right so. yeah and I mean Corey Davis he, he he's he has name cachet. You know, sure, he was that, probably the consensus 1-1 one, one pick last year Yeah, or on one, Twitter. Two, yeah. He was definitely the Twitter 1-1 one, one pick. Right. I don't know that I ever saw a draft where Leonard Fournette didn't go one right. overall, but there's a ton of hate on him out there. But, like, Corey Davis was probably at two. I actually got him at 1-4 yeah. in our 12-man dynasty league that we all got three play in together. In front of him. And, yep, Mixon went right in front of him, and I was sitting there, and I could have taken Christian McCaffrey or Corey Davis. And, you know, I... From a points wise, I, I probably could have used. I probably I might have won a championship with Corey with uh, Christian McCaffrey. The guy who took Christian McCaffrey won the championship. Oh I, yeah, I lost to Christian McCaffrey. But he also did have Gurley. So, but he had Gurley. Yeah, I got Todd. Gurley. He had that resistance. I had Todd. I got Todd Gurley in Week 16. I'm sure plenty of people did. So I'm not. I'm not mad at him. I. I looking back at it now, would I change my pick? I. I, I probably would. But I'm still completely happy to have Corey yeah. Davis on my team, a top twenty guy who can who has the ability to push his way up into the top ten, up into the top five. Right. Even which he's is, a guy that can escalate, and that's what that's what we're looking for. And right. even if he doesn't push himself up into there, exactly. he can still sustain this area right. type value. And so it's kind of win win. Why I'm really I kind of let it off with alluding to that, and that's kind of why I'm pretty comfortable with him, no problem. And and he could easily. Just through next year could be 10 spots ahead of where he is right now. Right. So easily. All right. Let's go to break. We'll be back and round out this top 20 uh, wide receiver rankings. Another fresh crack is a nerve wracking bunch here. Yeah. We're going to round it out with our consensus uh, average here. Number 20, which we've had uh, a lot of a discussion. Yeah. A lot of a lot of tough discussion here to end up with Alshon at 20. But me and Jason uh or jay wayne sorry oh i went with the full government <laughs> now they know well you've done it plenty so i think people um, probably know we both had him at, at 20 and big co i believe had juju at 20 i went hi bitch yeah um <laughs> i questioned that move yeah G big co's a hater on alshon i wish he was here to, to throw some yeah. shade because I, I don't and he's a usc guy right so, it doesn't make any sense to me but odd yeah um but yeah so we got alshon we got him at number 20 i think he he could he's we a were, guy that could right. make he could his be way. 19 he could be 18 we reluctantly kind of stuck him here uh either reluctantly to be 22 or reluctantly to be 18 kind of where he's just kind of floating around here yeah um i guess the biggest problem is he's a soon to be 28 guy yep um in obviously February. you love the fact that he just got locked up to a long-term deal with probably the best young emerging quarterback in the league it's safe to say at least right now right obviously we're living in recency bias capital of the world mm -hmm. um called fantasy football little in one town of the, called aspen <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a good offense with a great offensive minded head coach right so yeah, it's a great situation right everything's kind of working for him they have other weapons around him they got a really good offensive line and awesome defense they got some so, running backs back there yeah every everything's kind of working for him but the huge bummer is obviously carson wentz goes down week 15 14 mm -hmm. um with with a torn ACL and then as they got into surgery and started taking a closer look it was it was a little more and it's looking like it's a possible long injury here maybe you're like in the 9 to 10 12 month window here even possibly and uh so I think that's the biggest deterrent right now for me for Alshon you got a guy who's a little bit older and you could possibly lose close to a year of production from this guy right um so that that's my biggest kind of quandary right now but we wanted a little, a little bit more information on the on the Carson Wentz uh, injury here, so we're bringing in our first in studio guest. Yeah, just happens to be the other person who lives at the studio <laughs> with me, <laughs> and my wife, uh, Alex Myers, Alexandra Myers. You can find her at Twitter 
It doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's taken. So, <laughs> so back, back off. off, bud. Yeah. Uh, but Which she, she is, is a little nasally from a cold. Yeah. Everyone in the world is sick right now. They're the doc. The the doctors of the world are spraying things into the air to make everybody sick. Yeah. Just get a little bit more cash, like because they, they don't have enough. <laughs> but uh, she's also the resident Eagles fan. She is. The, all these Huge things are really Eagles fan. Not good and good for us at the same time. <laughs> she she and Jay Wayne's wife uh, went to. Uh, the physical Medical Thera- University of South Carolina. They're both physical therapists. Yep. Uh, that's kind of how me and Jason, long story short, how me and Jason got together. So you can thank her for that later. Yeah, we were at one of their boring uh, MUSC gathering, student gatherings. And like, I, and, and I, you know, you got you guys drag your spouses along to that thing or your significant others. None of us were married at that time. Well, I was married to Cassie at that time. Uh, and I, I'm just standing there and all the girls are talking amongst themselves and the physical therapists are talking. And I see Casey buys lonesome over there and he's wearing a san francisco 49ers hat and i'm like hey that guy likes football i'm about to go talk to him about football <laughs> i knew you had a good defense i brought drops from navarro bowman and, yeah. and we got to chit chatting and that was kind of how the whole well this- I, I really i i can't i'm not gonna speak for you but i married my wife so i could get the inside scoop on my players being injured and, right. and the length and how much i should be concerned so you married a younger more attractive stefania bell is I, I think here. i may have so, Stefan, I mean, Alex, <laughs> give us give us the scoop on Carson Wentz here. What what kind of injury is it? I mean, and, and how long is, is the usual comeback? I know we're dealing with, you know, the top of the line, everything here. So you yeah. can expedite some things. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got your typical ACL injury. That's not something anybody's unfamiliar with. Um, and the meniscus and almost any time you do a serious tear your ACL, you're going to get your meniscus at the same time. And, and Casey's torn his ACL twice got the meniscus on the second go round and if, and he'll tell he'll be the first to tell you the meniscus is what's going to cause him the problems cause him the pain down the road you know he's like only Casey partially said. torn though yeah well i mean most yeah. meniscus well are, there was some meniscus damage torn. um but there was the partially torn it band right so that i was going to come to that so you know on one hand a lot of times when you get that acl you get the mcl along with the meniscus so you know one hand we missed the the mcl which is great right um but then we got this it band partial tear uh which isn't something you see all that often there's a lot about it band syndrome out there um i can't say you know in school that we ever talked about a a a real true tear of an it band um and it's just really uncommon you know the it band just you got this couple inch long maybe not even that long muscle depending on your on your body size but then you got a tendon that runs and that's up you know the muscles the muscle belly is all the way up near your hip and that tendon runs all the way down your leg down the side and inserts into the actually the outside of the bottom bone in your knee so it runs across your hip and your knee joint so that's a big muscle and he took small a small muscle so you're saying the hip bones connected to you. Knee bone. Sorry. <laughs> so he took he took kind of a weird shot going into the end zone, which kind of came from the outside in, which yeah. m- maybe led to some of that. Yeah, for sure. And you know that's the part I think that's leading to this longer window of recovery is that you know it's not something we see that often, but now you've got three different structures, just like as if you know he had torn the MCL. You got three things now that are all messed up, and with a with a true like it band syndrome i'm a long distance runner and if you start suffering with that it's really difficult to come back from just if you you know have it inflamed so to go to go all the way to tearing it and trying to come back from that can really complicate the process for so sure. what, what does the it band actually do so what's it doing what is it doing i never know what it's doing what's it wearing <laughs> so it does a lot um for stability in your knee and Snap Jason, the picture Jason during the podcast. Pictures. I distracted her. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it does a lot for stability, um, does a little bit of p- for power. Really, you know, it's it doesn't it's not a huge powerhouse. It's not going to really limit the biggest problem people have when you have e- IT band problems is you have IT band pain and it can mess up your alignment in your knee, cause pain. You can actually get stress fractures from it. Um, so there's you know, there's a whole bunch that goes along with this injury and it can be a long lasting nagging injury. All right. So what like timetable of like best case scenario, what do you think 
in your professional opinion, obviously you're not the team doctor and you're not around him all the time. And, and no, I want to know when is Carson Wentz going to be back? <laughs> we'll take this with a, you know, somewhat of a no grain of salt. No one wants but. to know when Wentz is coming back any more than I do. Right. Uh, I will tell you guys that my wife is a huge Eagles fan. And when we did the little Carson Wentz thing and made fun of him, like my wife is in a terrible, terrible funk for that whole time that that happened and, and was checking her phone every 10 minutes to figure out what was wrong I mean, I was at work between patients Googling Carson Wentz's injury and actually got approved for the day off after the Super Bowl. All Philly fans can now hate me the yep. day that he got a confirmed ACL tear. That's what Philly They're going to call this the, the Alex Myers injury. <laughs> that did happen before I asked for the day off. But So what, what kind of timetable do you think? So, the I mean, like I said, the, the kicker and the... the um, unknown for this is that it band you know your typical acl you would think hey he'll be back beginning of the season um ease his way back in you know i think that it band is why you're seeing more of that 9 10 12 month period um and as well as that meniscal tear it really they don't they don't do a good job in the NFL of actually giving you like grade one, grade two, grade three, which tells you really how bad it is. They just say, oh, there's a tear. Some oh, there's a sprain. Damage. And, yeah. you yeah. know, I'm constantly, Casey's asking me, how long is this guy going to be out? Well, what, how, well, how bad is this tear? Sometimes I don't know. you can find that information, but a lot of the times they're you know, less willing to. I mean, it's like right. any team, especially, you know, especially a team like the Patriots. They're not telling you anything. Right. I mean. It, they don't want you to know. Right. So maybe best case scenario, like a, probably like October, maybe end of October. Yeah. So we're missing at a, least half the year, right? There's I no would, chance he's, it's like we got a I best case think, scenario. I mean, based on everything I've read and based on, you know, what I do know, I'm thinking, you know, the end of October. And at that point, it's where are we in our season? Is, you know, has, have you we competing? gone, have right. we gone 0 and 8? Or have we held in there six and eight, and now we're you know still competitive? And six and eight's a little much. Well, you know, six and yeah. two. Or Optimism. Six, yeah. and, six and two. Yeah, whatever. Eight, I mean, four. Eight eight say you're yeah. four. All right, math is hard. Say, six of eight was what I was thinking. It say you're four and four, right? right? And you're a few games back. Right. You probably don't want to rush him back. Right, and also well, I you think know you got to rush him back at four and four. Yeah, maybe. I think I think you do at four and four, depending on how your quarter, whoever we have for quarterback, how, right. how are they playing? How's it going? You know, if, if we really are six, six of eight, so yeah. six and eight. Nice. Uh, Good recovery. <laughs> if we really are six and eight. Maybe this guy's not doing so bad. Maybe we want to rest him a couple of weeks. Season's not in the tubes, um, which, you know, in that case, bringing it back to Alshon. Maybe Alshon production really isn't that bad because whoever this person is that's in there that's got a six of eight. Or maybe mm -hmm. it's just your defense and your run game. Right. Possibly. And, and whoever possibly could just get open because Alshon's du doubled. I just don't I, – I, I'm kind of, you know, skeptical of – this is the guy that I think – the Eagles and everybody in Philly is is and the team is like this is this hasn't happened in a while. You have a guy who could potentially be one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and I just, I just I don't think there's any chance that they want to rush him back quicker than right. needed. I know championship windows open and close pretty quickly, but I mean as long as you have a guy like this who we think what Carson Wentz is going to be is is great. Why why uh, why risk it? Yeah, I mean, you got to view it as an investment. Invest a little bit more time. Maybe this next year is not going to be our season, um, which is hard after having this season go so well and, and having this season probably also not be our season. Yeah. Um, yeah. But is but it's worth it to go one more yeah. season to know that, you know, next, the following year we're good. I yeah. mean, we've got some young guys. We've got some good talent on the team. There's There's – Wanting to bring him back is all well and good, but making sure it's worth it. So there's a good chance that he could miss around a half of the season, if not a little bit more. Um, Which I think warrants dropping Alshon back into this 20 range. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really see why not. He's a little older, and and you could almost lose a, most of a solid year. Maybe he comes, excuse me, maybe he comes back, you know, 15, 16. 14 helps you out a good bit in the championship, but you also have a guy then who hasn't played at all in the, like in Wentz who hasn't played at all in right. training camp in preseason in any games at all. Right. Like, and we just be expecting him to come pick up that right. level of 
of elite talent of elite production that he that he left right. with, you know, and just off the rip. What what you were banking on get with the Alshon that you're banking on getting on, especially drafting me at this point, was that Alshon from week like nine until Wentz went down, which was great production. That's what you were looking for. He was probably averaging close to 15 points a game because you had some 17s. You had a bunch of 10s. You had some 15s, 20s in there and was just looking good. I went back and watched a good bit of that tape. He looked fantastic through that time. Him and Carson were kind of getting on the same page. He yeah. was seeing targets early in the season, but they just hadn't quite developed that chemistry, I didn't think. And I thought he looked really strong through there. And if if I can get that Alshon with Wentz, I have no problem maybe taking him two spots ahead of where, where we got him right now. Right. Yeah, me either. And and looking at uh looking at that week nine game versus Denver, I haven't seen too many wide receivers make a keep to leave look bad. And Alshon could have he had he had uh six catches for eighty four yards and two touchdowns and I think he dropped like three balls. He could have had even more yardage and he was just working to leave and it was like it was the play calling and it was his route running and it was the timing that him and Carson Wentz had together. Um, like that play call where he scored that first touchdown, it was a play action fake to to Jay Ajayi, and at the same time, Alshon's faking the screen, and a Teeb a Teeb a Teeb a Teeb Kaleeb, he bites <laughs> just a little bit on that play action fake, and 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 he, Alshon's he's gone. He's gone. But that then boy he beat, gone. He beats him on another touchdown on a slant. You yeah. know, a, a long crossing slant. And, and so, he dropped a couple in that game and could have had an even bigger game. Right. That, that's what I've said. I right. said that. It's <laughs> so crazy. It's hard yeah, and you don't want to you don't want to tie it all up in Wentz, too, because you look, the week that Foles went out, I just pulled up, you know, our league from the season, PPR. Um, 15 points with Foles the week after. I mean, it. He's a touch. He's, he scored nine touchdowns. He's, he's scoring still gonna touchdowns. play regardless Not, of the quarterback. I mean, with yeah, Wentz, but, is he better? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just I fear the elite play that you're drafting him as here. Yeah, we're talking top twenty dynasty wide receivers, it and you're is, gonna want to lean it's, on. It's those a little dudes. dicey, but I mean, you got him locked up now, and you have you have you you have to think that Wentz is gonna be around in Philadelphia for a long time. So that's kind of what you're banking on. Alshon's like a, a bigger body, bigger frame kind of guy. So. You know, I think the touchdowns can stay around for a little while, especially as these guys, you know, grow and develop with one another. So absolutely. All right. Well, I think this will put a wrap on uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Really, uh, thanks to thank you, Alex, for coming and joining us. We've contemplated having you on for a while now, and and it just kind of worked out. We had no big code tonight. We wanted to talk about your team and your quarterback and. Got your analysis. How how how, would, how do how do you feel after your first? Uh... Really, really feel honored. I appreciate uh, y'all having me on. I know y'all like uh, listening to women talk about sports. It's one of your favorite things. <laughs> hey, hey, we love women around yeah, here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, See? just as much as Cam Newton likes us to talk about rap. Hey, hey, don't put us in the Cam <laughs> Newton. Uh, don't put us in Cam Newton's category. I really enjoyed you talking about routes. I'll tell you what happened when she came in here and started talking. Went from six to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> If you weren't around, we'd be doing it on this table right now. <laughs> this is, that's for a different podcast. That's also the, named the Pleasure that's Chest. The pleasure <laughs> chest. <laughs> for her pleasure. Yeah. I don't know if it's my pleasure. Whoa. What? <laughs> you get a loud amount like that? Whoa. Oh, man. Oh, man. No, you got this. Re- no, it's great. That's where you got to be like, no, it's really good. It's so good. It's so good. So good. That wasn't sincere or genuine. <laughs> I'll be pleasuring myself tonight. <laughs> He's joking around. Who <laughs> feels so good when he jokes? <laughs> All right. What well, better way to end the show than on a dang the, wedding crash? Nice wedding crash, sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks I'm a lot, keeping Al. The painting time. <laughs> keeping the painting time. It's mine. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for listening to us, everyone. We're gonna call this a wrap. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard today, please go on uh, uh, iTunes, give us a five star review, or any platform, any you, platform your prefer. choice. Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio. Maybe we'll get on Spotify one of these days. They're a little proprietary. We'll try and maybe we'll get on DLF Central Podcast thing one of these days. I don't know. It's a hard to crack that list. If, boy. if we don't, if we don't get on there, but if Ken Moody doesn't allow us on there this time, yeah, uh, we're going to war. We're going to Twitter we're war. Going, no, we're going to just DLF okay. war in general. Uh, yeah, all you guys are on my shit list. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, and he means it because he's yeah. from the north. And he's he's serious about his threats. So. All right. Anywho, anywho, Big Co's not here, so we can end the show like this. Mary to the game. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>